Hey, next up, Rebecca Wallace with UGA, <laughs> User Tools, Downloads, Alerts, and Saved Queries. I can see your screen, Rebecca, but I cannot hear you. Turned on my video, did not turn on my, my audio. Now you're um, loud and clear, good. Yeah, all right. I'll be talking about user tools as they relate to different things you can do in EdMaps. So it's just gonna be, I'll be going over, oh, I'll, I'll be going, I'll tell you what I'm going over in just a second. Just to give you an idea of who I am, I'm, I've got a master's in crop and soil sciences. I started with Bugwood in 2011. I started as the EdMaps data coordinator, but they promoted me to EdMaps coordinator at some point. They just started calling me that. And I also became the Bugwood images coordinator in 2019. With regards, especially to EdMaps, my primary tasks end up including data coordination. I still do that. It's not it didn't just go away with the word data going away, which involves quality assurance, quality control, uploading data, verification, working with the verifiers in all different capacities, helping people with data queries. I also work on presenting to people and training sessions, creating training materials, information materials. And I also work with onboarding programs into EdMap. So some of you have talked about a program you been working with in the chat and in the questions. And so if you want to onboard your program, I'm probably one of the people you're going to be talking to with regards to answering. So what I'm actually going to be talking about today are the alerts, the user alerts, data downloads, and the saved queries concept. So when you are wanting to know, wanting to learn about alerts and, and see how you can create alerts, you would first start at my EdMaps. And then you would click on alerts on the left, and this is the page you would be taken to. So you can see that there are a number of parameters. So your notifications are based on these parameters. So you would say what country, state, perhaps county. You don't have to go all the way down to county. You can say an entire state. And then you would, if you are interested in more specific than just everything that comes into your state or county, you can say, I want to have uh, my division to be plants or insects or you can have a more specific category such as vines and shrubs, or you can even go all the way down to species. We do have some people who are interested in very specific species and getting alerts when records are verified of those species in their geographic area. There's also the checkbox at the bottom for first occurrence. That means that it would be the first verified record in that geographic area for that species. Some people just wanna know when something's reported or verified for the first time in a particular area, and they don't really have any interest after that. So we accommodate that with these alerts. Once you've set up your alerts, you will get emails as your parameters are met. And the email looks like this. It tells you what your parameters are. You can go and adjust your parameters straight from the email. If you click on any of the blue number links, that'll take you to that specific record so that you can go and view it. Um, as you notice, I'm signed up for people verifying things as unknown and unlisted so that I can help put those in the right species. So if you think you've missed an email, if you think that something has was supposed to come to you and it didn't, you can actually now view your messages online. So if you go to click on your name in the top right, click on messages, it'll take you to this page where you can search for the different types of, of messages that you think you might be missing or interested in general. So in this case, I chose alerts and I selected the top alert, which took me to this, this email, which looks like the email you just saw, but that way you can see things online as well. And so downloading data, there are a few different methods of downloading data. You can download through my EdMaps, you can download through our advanced query tool, or you can download all of the data for a single species through the distribution maps, but that is, very rarely recommended because it usually has more data than someone would want. And you'll get to see what I mean when I'm talking about the advanced query tool. So I'm gonna start off with the My EdMaps download. So to get to that page, you would click on My EdMaps and then Downloads, and it would take you to this page. So on this page, you will see at the top, there are a couple links, download my reports, and then there's the new invaders watch program reports. So that would be 
my own reports at the top, and this would include records for coordinates I have marked private. I would still see those coordinates. I would see my unreviewed records and so forth. With project reports, that'll be records associated with a particular project. And at the bottom, you can see there's a table of my requests. And if I click on download, I can download that file there. But when you download a file, download a um, data set from EdMaps, you get an email as well that says, hey, you requested data. Here's your link to download your data. To get to the advanced query tools page, you would click on the tools option under the tools and training menu option. And then you would click on advanced query tools, which is at the bottom left under database tools. The advanced query tools page has a lot of parameters. So I just wanted to kind of zoom in on just what you were expecting the whole thing to kind of look like with your ability to still read what these filters are. So you can filter by reporter, dates, species, and so forth. So if we look at the whole page, you'll see that there's also eradication status, which is you're positive, you're treated, negative, and so forth. You can search through specific invasive species lists. So if your state noxious weed list is what you're looking for, if we have it, you can uh, say, I want all these species in my query, the location information, and so forth. When you have your filters applied to return the results you're actually interested in, you would then click submit. Now, again, requesting all the data for a species or a whole state can result in a very large data set. And you may not be allowed to actually download that data set because we have a current cap at 200,000 records. So that's why I talk to people about, okay, well, what, what are you actually interested in? So we can narrow this down to what you're going to be wanting so that you're not just getting a whole bunch of stuff you're going to throw away anyway. So once you've clicked submit, you will then be taken to a page where if it's under 200,000 records, you'll see the map and you'll see your query parameters and a summary of the results at the top. Your query parameters are on the left. So Jerry, I picked your county. I hope you feel honored. If I zoom in on the results summary, you're going to see a lot of numbers there. So what these numbers mean, when we talk about locations, we're talking about basically an occurrence, a distinct place, species, and date. So anytime we're talking about locations, that's what we're talking about. We, as I mentioned, there is the concept of private where the records are not shared publicly once the record is available, the whole record itself is available publicly. So in this case, Jerry's County has over 6,000 essentially locations with records, but only about not quite 16,000 are um, shared publicly. The coordinates are shared publicly. When they're not shared publicly, they're just known at the county level. The next, it says that there's a certain number of infested acres. Now, this information is only available when we know how many infested acres exist. We do have a fair amount of data where we don't have infested acres as a, a field that was reported to us. So this is basically at minimum, what we know. New locations, so there's a lot of new locations where there were added for a, a specific time period. Those are new original records. There are records, that, when we talk about records, that includes the original records and usually as well as the revisits. In this case, it includes the revisits. And then there are over, <laughs> Jerry, you guys are busy. There are over 20,000 revisits in Jerry's County. So that just gives you an idea of what you're seeing when you are looking at that blue box. If you want to download a file, you would go to those links above the map on the right. You have your CSV, which you open in a program like Excel. You have your KML, which is really just useful for shapes on a map. There isn't a lot of uh, databasing you can do with KML files. And those are opened in a program like Google Earth. And then you have shapefile. Now shapefile, it used to be actually just a shapefile, but we have producing what are called geo packages. And uh, you can open it in ArcGIS, you can open it in QGIS. It's a way to provide all the data in a, a more compact file than we were previously. So moving on to saved query, once you create a query and you save it, you can run it many times. This also allows for custom data sets in EdMaps Pro. So some of you uh, may have played around with EdMaps Pro or have seen some of the videos we have about EdMaps Pro. So we have had county data sets for a, a long time with EdMaps Pro, but now we have these custom data sets. So if you're only interested, say, say if Jerry was only interested in the noxious weeds that are um, in Tualatin County, now he's not getting all the other stuff in Tualatin County. He's getting just those noxious weed reports. However, Jerry, you have over 10,000 records in your data set, so you wouldn't be able to download Again, all of the data for Tuala County, you would have to have something a little bit more compacted and, and specific. 
So in this case, I chose another county. We have under 10,000 records. And again, oh, sorry, 10,000 records is the current cap. And that uh, for the most part has to do with EdMaps Pro and downloading data to EdMaps Pro, but we are working on increasing that cap. So with the save query button, you click on it and it will save your query and you can name it. To access your saved queries, again, we go back to my EdMaps and you click on my EdMaps and click on my saved queries. And it'll take you to a table of the queries you've created and named. You can click on any of these queries to run and see the results. Now, these aren't static data sets. These are just the recipe for getting to the data set. So anytime new data is added, whenever you click on the query to run it, it's going to include that new data. If you want to create more data sets, you will click on the create new data set link and it'll take you to that advanced query tools page to put your parameters in. And then again, all of these are uh, custom data sets you can download the data for in EdMaps Pro. One thing I didn't mention that um, I was supposed to and completely blanked on was that with alerts, we are going to be releasing the ability to have the alerts texted to you. So instead of just getting emails, that will be a feature we are um, going to be releasing or adding very soon. But do we have any questions? We've got a few minutes before the break. So in the in the chat or in, well, some people have been putting it in the chat and some people have been putting it in the questions and answer area. Do we have, like I said, any questions about anything relating to uh, the user tools? Now, I just gave you a broad overview and mostly focused on the things that are new. So any existing features I might not have covered very in depth, but I wanted to make sure that these new features that we have built in the last year or so were made, uh, made known to our public. But hey, someone's liking the safe queries. That's fantastic. Yes, we work with a lot of people who are interested in running a data set monthly, quarterly, or even just yearly, and this allows them to save that and so they don't have to put in all those parameters each time and again because of someone like jerry who has a lot of a lot of reports in his county this will allow him to have a, a much more specific data set so that he can download it and go out and do the work although i'm not sure if he does the work anymore or if his technician's the one running the game at this point how will we know when edmaps pro is available for ios it's already available the only thing that's not available on edmaps pro iOS is the project's feature, but everything else with EdMaps Pro is already on iOS. So you can report, you can conduct revisits, you can go and if you're a verifier, you can go out into the field and review records in EdMaps Pro in the field. There's a lot already out there. It's just right now for iOS, the project's feature has not been added, but that's coming very soon. I see just one more question for you, Rebecca, uh, and I think you may have already answered it, but can I use EdMaps Pro to manage invasive species on private lands? Yes. So that's why I was talking about private a little bit earlier. When you have private records, when they're available to the public, they're just going to show up at the county level. Um, but when you are looking at your data on, say, EdMaps Pro and you've downloaded it, you'll be able to see those coordinates. So you can conduct revisits to records that are downloaded for you on EdMaps Pro, but wouldn't be downloadable to other people. If exact coordinates are, some landowners don't mind having their, their coordinates out there, but some are very more secret, not secretive, but um, careful about data about their property being out there. Awesome. Thank yes. you. Oh, sorry, Sage. When you revisit a point in EdMaps Pro, is there an option to add the point as a treated, eradicated? Yes, they are. So when you go into EdMaps Pro, when you look at the revisit form, it, there are options for positive, treated, eradicated, and negative. So you just pick the one that's most applicable to the type of what happened with your revisit, what's there or not there. Okay, well, thank you so much. We are now scheduled for a 10-minute break, and we have over 50 answered questions in the Q&A box. So thank you so much for asking your questions, and thanks to our panelists for being so diligent about answering those questions. Feel free to continue to put them in, but right now we have a 10-minute break scheduled. We are right on time, so we will see you in 10 minutes. Thank you.